go into a store, uh, a GameStop, maybe look at the used games that I'm not very familiar with, but I can't test out in the store. And have you looked at and read the back of boxes lately? They don't tell you anything about genre. They just tell you like very basic uh, things about the aesthetics of the game that you don't even... It doesn't even really tell you what the heck you're going to be doing in it. You have nice screenshots maybe, but some of those screenshots are deceiving. I, I mean, I could show you a game on the Genesis that you might think was a strategy game and it ended up being, uh, you know, more like a RPG, maybe something like um, Techno Clash or something, I don't know. But at least those boxes would tell you what kind of game you would expect. Kids aren't reading these, maybe, but, you know, it, it, it bothers me to no end that I can't just test these games out. What, when I was younger, there used to be a, a Funkolian near a grocery store. While our mother shopped for groceries, we would go check out the Funkolian. In the meantime, we'd be, you know, playing games uh, like it was a free arcade, but we'd also, if we thought we might want a game, we could ask them to pop it in and you could play it. It was, you know, for anything. Game Boy, Game Gear, Nintendo, uh, or 64, but... Sig Genesis, whatever it was, we could ask them to change out the game. The, the current system just sucks. GameStop pretty much has their demos that the, the publisher or Sony gives them, and that's the only thing they're going to play on there. There needs to be another big brick and mortar store that has the number of stores to compete because because GameStop is just not allowing kids to, to try out stuff, and you didn't even know. You go into the store and you had maybe a glimpse of what was available in the magazines and maybe a commercial you saw, but you could go on the shelves and you pick out a title and you say, this looks interesting, I'm going to try it out, because I can. You know, there's a store back on the East Coast I was at last year called Play and Trade. I do think they would allow you to test stuff out in that store. They had a bunch of machines set up, but I never asked, so maybe they don't. I don't know. Either way, it... There just I'm needs to be sure another another you know, major guy, like, game guy, store out there man. to compete yeah, with GameStop. Like the co the co whole consolidated stuff system stuff just, like, it's not working yeah, and, you know, I'm kids like, can't be expected to know everything about every single game they pick up on the shelf, so. I mean, come on, I mean, how, how else are you going to know whether or not you're going to plop down $25? I don't care if you're going to allow me to return it within a month or seven days or whatever the policy is. I want to test it out right there in the store. I don't want it to bring it home and decide that the game was crap. Especially if you're a kid and you don't have the kind of transportation or the freedom to go beyond your front yard without parental guidance and it's it, try getting your parents to go back because you you, <laughs> you just bought a game and yet you, you hated it it's you have to wait you know to the next time they go to grocery shopping so it's just frustrating now with the way these stores are set up there's there's got to be a better a better store than and game stuff that needs to come along. Shooting these things out rapid fire. Welcome to the new results. And that first sale actually was on a Friday, very early in the morning. You know, I was looking at the listings ahead of time, and it said that this sale was going to have Nintendo cartridges. Now, the thing is, I tend not to go back to the same sales because uh, I normally ask all my questions so that I don't even have to come back to the place ever again but you know I had been to this place this uh, this house before they were selling uh, Atari games and they had like a Sears um, telegame system I ended up buying like Donkey Kong from them they did have Sega games but the neighbor across the street had taken them and <laughs> I know the neighbor across the street because I went to their sale, I think last year sometime, but they had a Sega Nomad in the, in the uh, I wasn't able to buy it from them because the kid who was at work actually didn't want to sell it. But as you saw in the clip, I found the Master System 2 and 
if there were games that went for the Master System 2, then I don't think the kid knew that, that uh, you know, it would be incompatible with the Genesis, so I didn't even bother, you know, asking for any information on the kid or anything like that, just because of, uh, the kid was probably a dumbass anyways. Um, I picked up this sucker, and have mixed feelings about it. Um, I actually already have uh, Master System 2, but it's sealed and I never opened it. It was some sort of special combo deal. I showed it in one of my past um, results videos, the old results, but this time I actually have a system, a Master System 2, and I gotta say I like the fact that it's so compact, but like so many other companies, they, they take away nice features. Like, for instance, you can't play any of the slot card games, so instantly that uh, takes away the 3D games. And uh, another feature they took away is the uh, composite out. They even built in a game. I mean, it's just, I think it's either like comms or Alex Kidd. I haven't, haven't tested it out yet. And even as recent as the Wii, they took out the backwards compatibility with the GameCube games. I mean, honestly, they're making these decisions to save money, but as a gamer, looking back, it just frustrates me because, you know, you want to get something maybe like this that you know, could, could fit more readily in a tight spot, but at the same time, you're not going to be able to play all your games. I guess that's enough about that. Got the controller and uh, probably the most strain. I've never seen a Sega power adapter like this. I almost missed these a lot of these cables because they were sitting in a box beside everything. I, luckily I saw, I think, some like power adapter for a Game Boy in there. I picked up two of them and I picked up a DS adapter. And um, yeah, I would have missed it if I didn't see those. So. found a uh, Extreme Green controller. Getting that down, folks. Extreme Green. A braided uh, Nintendo composite cable. I don't know why. Like, no, it's a regular. But the games I picked up were Doom 64 and Mickey's Speedway, which is supposedly a really good Mario Kart clone. Uh, the rest of the games, they were pretty. They were all like really bad. Um, Turok was probably the the best one. Out. And a Spice Orange. GameCube controller, which has a a monkey sticker on it. I don't know who that is, but yeah, actually, uh, still have my Spice controller. I got rid of my GameCube. I I kept the the orange controller for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, all the video game stuffs out here. Uh... So you had like Nintendo stuff? Okay, I see it. It's just the, yeah, just the console, and then there's these PlayStation uh, 2 games. Do you have any games for the um, Nintendo? Or I see the PlayStation. for the Nintendo. Okay. For the Nintendo, what would you, what would you want? Um, pardon me? A mask? Go ahead. But, obviously, there's no controller, so I would just pick it up. I can do that. You know, it said it had N64 stuff, and I was expecting to see some games, possibly more related. But, you know, I, I was about to, to check out when I turned my head. This is in the box. And boy, oh boy, I meant the Game Boy was pretty much my system. I mean, it, it was given to my brother as a Christmas present, but I pretty much own the thing. Um, bought all the games for it when I went to Funko Land. Uh, we even we got a Genesis later on. My brother pretty much stopped playing the Game Boy. Maybe played Zelda every now and then, but 
this this was pretty much my system, and and I think because of it, it's just I never had a, a negative bias towards portable gaming, like a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of people who grew up just playing like Nintendo or Genesis, Super Nintendo, they they thought maybe it was for kids or that they just they couldn't get into it because the maybe the the, the technology was not as uh, not as great as those on the consoles. But and, and you know you always when you had a when you had a portable system like a Game Boy, you were always pushing you know or hoping for them to improve the technology to make something that would equal the class of a uh, console system but you know here we are in a day where consoles uh, these handhelds are PlayStation 2 um, PlayStation 3 quality games and you know you, you, you find yourself not really I mean I find myself maybe a lot of adult gamers find themselves find themselves maybe going towards the old school kind of games and I think that's where a lot of adult gamers continue their uh, their hobby with these handheld systems like PlayStation Portable and DS. You get you can get the same quality RPG game with new technology and improvements, but nothing as complicated as something you might find on a on a uh, contemporary uh, you know console that hooks up to your TV. So you can still get those quick bursts of action but you can also get the easier to it, it's limited but at the same time it's just I think it's it's it fits the 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 handheld well that that kind of old school like Super Nintendo and before uh, kind of quality game I'm gonna shut up let's see I didn't see what was in the system here um, beyond like the first few cartridges and I thought to myself it doesn't leave it as a surprise but I did notice uh, and I think I may leave it in the clip but they had Zelda of course uh, I think they had a Mickey game in here yeah I own this game I was uh, really unhappy I spent my $30 uh, birthday present from um, my aunt and uncle and then such a hard game that it pissed me off to no end that I spent 30 bucks. Eventually I beat the game, but it was only on emulator. And of course they have uh, Tetris in there. Just notice this too. Can, a, uh, <laughs> can be glued down. But uh, let me see if this battery. It has batteries. Totally dead though. Got some other stuff in here. Folks, what do we got? We've got system, health precautions, Tetris. Dangerous chase manual. What the heck? This is odd. It's a very, here's your standard Game Boy manual. Here's the uh, Link's Awakening manual. This is odd. It reminds me of a... Uh, well, it has the same dimensions as the Pokemon manual. They're like this square kind of format. But it reminds me more of like the European ones. And normally you see like this color of... Uh, like a little triangle wedge of like yellow, blue, whatever on the corner. But it definitely says uh, USA up in the corner. And Redmond, Washington on the back. So I guess maybe the... The bundle, like this is some sort of Zelda bundle system. It came with a larger manual. I don't know. But that sale was on Saturday. So, um, the other sale that I just showed you previously had on that Friday before it. If you have grandsons, these are all. This is where we're at. Oh, uh, banana shoots and tops. Yeah.
Oh, I don't have a fish. 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 I don't have so what what do you want to price for the whole lot? Yeah. Well, you you tell me what you want to pay. Um. Well, I was hoping to pay like maybe around ten for these. Okay. Thank you. Oh man. Oh. Um. That last sale I went to, I paid fifteen for the N sixty four, and the Game Boy. And if I didn't mention in the first clip, because I forget now, having set up everything over here, the sad the uh, Mega. May Master System and the N64 GameCube controller and those two games were 15 bucks, so not a bad deal. The guy wanted five bucks for each of those systems. So, anyways, the next sale. Uh, if I hadn't shown up when I did, maybe just a few minutes later, I wouldn't have had time to look through everything because right at my heels was that asshole nemesis of mine, and he basically bought everything there, game related. Um, and then afterwards, I'm pretty much proceed to buy a bunch of other stuff. He owns some sort of flea market booth, whatever. But um, I was kind of cautious about what I was grabbing, just because they were saying like five, fifteen bucks for each one of these games. They had like PS3 games there. Um, I thought of maybe grabbing Portal 2, but I thought I would have a better chance of getting the prices I wanted to pay with the DS games. So. Uh, and actually, a lot of them ended up being empty, the cases they had there. Um, so I made sure, and some of them ended up being switched. Dragon Quest VI. Realms of Revelation. Dragon Quest Nine Sentinels of Starry Skies. This one doesn't have its mail, I know that for sure. New Super Mario Brothers. Fossil Fighter Champions. Last game I got, I just... I really wasn't sure I wanted it just because I didn't know if it was going to end up being uh, some compilation of mini games. Um, it looks like a platform on the no back of what the gameplay is. It's not telling me, you know, if it says run and jump, it just <sighs> explore. Stuff like that would, would indicate to me like it's more than just a, a collection of mini games. Reading the mail or, you know, in these situations, I almost find it really difficult to read. <laughs> um, I was, but going through this mail, I was trying to figure out like what the hell this game was about. And uh, it, I mean, there's there's some parts. Maybe if I read more, it would give me a better indication. But for the most part, this thing is useless. So. Um, not to say that not to say that I agree with removing manuals from games, but you know some manuals they just need to be reevaluated to, or just the advertising needs to be reevaluated. I need to know what the hell I'm buying, so I bought it because I like the series. Um, I don't know if they still show it on Cartoon Network, but you know it's think of it like as an endless summer kind of movie. Um, you know, adventures of kids and their imaginations, and they get to all have all these crazy schemes about making money. It's a very good show. Check it out. And they also had a brand new unopened classic controller, which I I don't I don't have one of these, but um, brand new. I mean, I figured well, why the heck not pick it up? So uh, the even though they had these prices there, they didn't seem to really be so attached to it. So they said, uh, you know, how much do you want to pay? And that's like the best line you can ever get. But at the same time, I kind of weighed what they had, you know, the, the prices there. So I said 10 bucks, and they took it. So, I mean, that was a pretty decent haul for, for, for three days, maybe. Uh, I know there are some... Some guys up uh, in Canada, who I don't know how they how they how they can pick up so much. I have nothing to complain about. It's all good. It's all good. So I hope you guys had uh, some great garage sale events as well. But yeah, it's out there. Now go get it.